I want to mention some things, though. We got new people, and I like to, I think we still have some of these sheets out there. It's called Praise and Worship. And uh, sometimes people raise their hands. Sometimes people shout here. Sometimes people are crying here. And if you haven't been exposed to that, it can feel like, what? You know? And the Bible talks about that, and the sheet talks about the different words where God gives us permission to shout. He gives us permission at the right timings um, to throw up our hands to worship. That's called yada in the original language, to throw out the hand to worship with extended hand. And it's to submit yourself and all your problems and difficult circumstances to God. Did you know that? So we can be saying, I want God to help me. Right? Right? There's just something different about going, God, help me. Right? It means I'm coming under your mission. The word submission means to come under the mission of. Right? Sometimes we don't know what his mission is, so that's good to go to church and find that out. It's good to get in the Bible and find out what is the mission of God. And then we want to be able to get underneath that. Now, tauda means to extend the hand in an offering of thanks, adoration, accept, acceptance, and praise to God. That is a sign of saying, I recognize my own personal lack and defilement. Did you know that? Woo-woo. And it comes from living in the world and then express gratitude and appreciation is what comes out of that. You know, we're like, oh, Lord. <laughs> here's the total submission. Here's, here's the yada. Or toda, I should say. And yada is the other one. So these are just a couple of them. Halal means to boast, to celebrate, to tell of God's greatness. Some people haven't done that yet in their Christian walk. This is about as loud as we get. We're like, yeah, God's good. Somebody whisper all the time. That's it, huh? That's what you got. So, so we grow into these things, to boast, to celebrate, to tell of God's greatness, to be clamorously foolish, loud, noisy, causes other people to kind of be confused as what's going on. That's the meaning of it. And everybody's talking at the same time. Sometimes that'll happen here. I know it happens at Word of Life. You know, somebody's over here saying, God, I love you. And someone is over here saying, God, forgive me. All kinds of stuff's going on all at the same time. But it's a beautiful sound before the throne or it wouldn't be in the scripture as a form of worship. Then there's Shabak to address in a loud tone to shout and to command. There's some authority in that kind of praise. He thought we were just getting together to sing a little dangling song, right? We're just getting together. <laughs> dang a lang, dang a lang. You know, no, it's more than that. It's more than that. I even it even sounds like a shabak. I mean, it's like, woo, to address in a loud tone, to shout, to command. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely comes across like that, and there's all kinds of scriptures regarding that. Uh, Barak means to kneel, to bless God in reverence and awe and expectation. You can be on your knees. You can bow to him in your heart, right? Or the head goes down. It's like he's God, and I, I, guess, I guess I figured out I'm not, right? There's an acknowledgment that he is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And the, so there is a blessing that comes that we give God. We're like blessing his heart. We're making weighty the praise. So I'm bringing this up. I don't know. Lord told me to bring this out before I ever entered the sanctuary here tonight. Just we go over it every once in a while, and there's far more words than that. As a reminder, and if you came the first time, as a way of saying, warning. <laughs> this could happen here at any time. <laughs> right? Amen. Yeah, and it should. Now, we could easily go to sleep so easily. We'll just let the band do that. You go ahead, Shabak, and, and you go ahead, Barak, and do all that. Isn't that wonderful how they do that? No, it's actually our responsibility to bring our offerings of praise before God. We're offerings of praise. It's not singing a little dingling song. You can do that around anything else, right? But this is that part where it's like, I got to offer this up to him. I have to. After everything that happened this week, after everything that happened today, I have to offer my God praises. Testimonies work that way, too, when you testify. Um, of course, remember, when you testify, there was a test. 
probably more than the emergency broadcasting system. It was definitely a test, and you're testifying of how he brought you through that. Amen? Amen. So I thought I'd bring that up because if we start posturing ourselves as half asleep, we have no offering for him. So somebody might say tonight, I don't feel like I have anything. Then give him your nothing. Just give him your, your no thing that you carried in here. Give him that no thing. That's the word nothing. You know, you just tell him, Lord, I submit to you. Have the all of me. Here's basically what I have. Nothing. But I want to serve you. Amen. It's that little bit of exchange that makes all the difference in the world. So I want to encourage you in that because some of you will be in church again tomorrow morning. Get your praise on, my friend. Bring your offerings. I like to rev up on the way to church. So, so I'm a safe driver yet when I do that most of the time. You know, if it was a long distance to church, it might get more and more unsafe as I go, as I get caught away. But, you know, we got like a 15-minute drive, so by the time I'm to church, I'm like, let's do this thing. You don't wait till you come through the doors. You're already preparing an offering before you get there. And it's better to blare the radio in the car anyway on praise and worship than it is to argue all the way there. How many of you would agree yeah. with that? Because then you have to put that one face on where you have your Bible and you're like, praise God. And you come walking in and everyone knows, yeah, they fought all the way here. That's what's real. So I'm just saying. All right. Well, we're going to go into talking about faith tonight. Um, we're on a little bit of a series. I don't often do series, but um, there's something about knowing the ins and outs of faith because your faith will be tested. Even if you say, I just got this little, little thing. Okay, does God set it up? Like, I got to test their faith. No, usually what happens is this world system stinks. It's horrible here, and it will test your faith. And when that test comes, we want to hand in all of our assignments. That's what we want to do. We're like, we better study for this and hand in our assignments and take the test. And even if it doesn't come out pretty, we still took it. And there'll be some glory to God that'll come out of it. Amen? So there's something about faith doing that. Um, it gives us, well, you can't even worship without faith. You can't get saved without faith. There's no such thing as believing in God without faith. Someone tried to tell me recently, you, you use the word faith too much. Well, if you look in the scripture, just look it up. Ask your beautiful phone, can I have all the scriptures on faith? You'll be there reading a long time, <laughs> right? And other ones don't use the word faith. They use the word believe, which is to have faith. Amen? And then it'll use the, the, the word receive, which is using your, uh, your believer, which is your faith. The word receive means to take. I take healing this day. I take the daily bread he provided for me this day that it's going to take from me to do this Christian walk and pass the test. Amen? Amen? And so I have to eat of him, and then I have to uh, be in his presence and sometimes I got to shout and do those things that I got done saying. Now, I like to do completely opposite of how I feel. And I think we should get in the habit of that. Yeah, but I'm sad right now. Well, it's about time to turn on some like, praise music. Yeah, Different than worship. Because sometimes we can use our worship to feel sorry for ourselves. You ever do that? I've done that. Where you're like, yes, God loves me. <laughs> You know, and, and really we're there, you know, saying we're praising God, but we're in a moment where we're like, we'd like him to feel sorry for us. We can do that. Or we can do completely opposite. Like, I am not sitting in this. I'm not going to do it. I am going to get up out of this depressive state and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I'm going to not only have joy, but I'm going to rejoy by rejoicing. How can you do that? I don't know if I can. Well, how are you going to do that? By faith. 
You can't wait until it's there. You have to take that mountain by faith. Sometimes when you feel like, oh, or mad, you have to do this. Now, that's not faking it till you make it. I'm, I'm not big about the faking thing, right? Because real people have real success. But I could be having a really cruddy day, and I choose. I choose faith. I choose to believe he's taking care of me. I choose, and then it shows up on my face. And you do things like that by faith, all of a sudden your body follows that. And you start to realize, I don't need all this adrenaline. Because it'll call on the adrenaline, it'll call on the cortisol, it'll call on the, the, the things that are supposed to be there for you to be in survival. Well, I'm not surviving this life, I choose to live it. Yeah, but this happened and that happened, whatevs. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So, uh, so there's something about like the Shabbat to address in a loud tone, to shout, to command. Well, how many of us do that when we don't feel like it? It's hard. Sometimes it takes a whole two songs. <laughs> and now the way they do songs, you know, because old school you used to just sing a song, have the stanza, do the thing, over. And now we just go on. So two songs is a long time. Sometimes it takes two songs before we switch over into faith. But if you know that you're not able to do it right up front, then you have to ask yourself, am I in unbelief right now? Because unbelief would say, well, he's not going to help me anyway. What's the point of praising? He probably doesn't love me anyway. What's the point of praising? See, there's a reason that we're shut down, and you're combating that reason. A lot of times we'll make it super spiritual. Like, well, the reason I can't do that is there's devils after me right now. All night I've warred with the devil. Wow. Hmm? Do you think that's really accurate? All night you warred with the devil? You might war with your mind, right? The devil himself is not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at the same time. Like I always say, just like Santa Claus, can't do it. Guy can't do it. We keep telling him that he can, but he can't do it. There's only one that can, and that's the spirit of the living God can be everywhere all at the same time, right? The demonic realm can't be everywhere at the same time, but they do have people or beings assigned to you and to your lineage. And so wherever there's weakness... We have to make sure we're addressing that. Well, how do you address that? Leave me alone. Stay away. In Jesus' name. But then you come before him and you offer him your praise. And where you're doing that, the presence of the Lord is. And where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. Things that are demonic can't sit in that. Sorry. They, they might sit for a bit screaming for two songs worth. But you keep on keeping on, they're not going to sit there. You know, I got I to gotta set it up in here with the same way we have it set up, a word of life. There's worship music going 24 hours a day in, worship in, in the sanctuary. We've tried to set that out, and then it glitches, and I come in, and I'm like, come on. But we're going to get it set up where it's doing the same thing. So the atmosphere just stays full of fire, right? So we don't have to, you know, it's like, like I just started, had my husband start my, my motorcycle, and you could tell I hadn't run all winter. I was like, is that supposed to sound that way? <laughs> took a bit, took a little bit. I probably should have started it off and on throughout the winter. But, you know, it had a little bit of clacking that should not have been happening. I'm, I'm very in tune. I might not know what's causing things with, with motors, but motors are like music to me. If, if there's a note off, I'm like, that is out of tune. I don't know why. But I got to tell my honey, you know. And so, <laughs> but anyway, it definitely, to begin with, sounded out of tune. It wasn't warmed up. Fire has heat. And many times we'll live the Christian walk or we'll walk through it in a way where we're waiting for that special service to have fire. When you can start out your day with fire. And if the fire is not there or it's just a little bitty something, you add some kindling to that. As you're driving to work and you blare the music and begin to pray in the spirit. And it's one of those things you're not earning. It's that thing that you're offering yourself to him. And what does he do but show up in the midst of that? 
And when you're in his presence, everything changes. You don't actually have the power to change anything. For the good. You have to be in his presence. And then he'll tell you what to say on his behalf. And then you'll speak and you'll say what he already said. That's prayer. So we come up into this most holy faith. Now faith, this is verse 1 of chapter 11, Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance or the title deed or the confirmation of things hoped for, for divinely or they're divinely guaranteed. <clears throat> so sometimes we use faith like we, we do hope. Like the word hope um, in the New Testament means a joyful, confident expectation of something good. Whew, that's got life in it, right? But sometimes we'll say, uh, drive careful. I hope you make it home tonight safe. Huh? Now, we misuse the word. We used it in a worldly way. We're like, I hope. It's not a joyful, confident expectation of something good. And we can use, you know, I just have faith that God's going to be with us. But there's like a question mark in our tone as we're doing that. It doesn't sound like a guarantee. And this is saying, now faith is the assurance, the title deed. You own it. Confirmation of things hoped for. Joyful, confident expectation of something good. Divinely guaranteed. When it's promised by God's word, it's guaranteed. He's the yes and amen. His yes is a yes and his no is a no. Our yes is uh, kind of. Most of the time, sometimes, probably. It might. We don't know. Might. That's many times what our yes sounds like. And our, our no can be like, no, well, no. Well, we'll see. And we don't have a clear line. And his line is clear. Faith is clear that it's divinely guaranteed. And the evidence of things, of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Like there is a belief system like, I know that I am healed. I know it. Yeah, but my body is saying, I don't care what my body's saying. I have this conviction inside that his word is true. I have a joyful, confident expectation something good's happening. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, it's good stuff. The conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as fact. So faith itself has an understanding like that's a fact. Think about that. If you have faith in God, everything he stands for is a fact. That's how faith comprehends it. It's like, no, that's a fact. That's truth. And you shall know the truth. And what will it do to you? It'll set you free. Or some versions say it will make you free. Like I wasn't that way before, and now I am. You know, he made me free. But think about just, we haven't even gotten through pretty much the first verse. The conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. So we don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith, right? Now, people get scared of that because they're like, well, you can't just go believe for just anything. Well, true, everything's under his mission. Right? Submission. I submit myself, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. I'm under his mission, and the rest has to follow that program when I'm under his mission. And that's a fact. <laughs> that's a fact. It's so true. It's the conviction of its reality. I comprehend it that way because I'm comprehending through faith. But it sounds scary because... We don't like exact statements because exact statements can make you look like a fool. That's what a lot of people, the pride and the shame starts talking. Well, I don't want to say that I'm healed. And then what if it doesn't happen? Positionally, I'm healed either way. If I died today, if I just dropped over right here, <laughs> be a mess for you all to clean up. We'll have to sign somebody. <laughs> So you can go home and they can take care of the rest. But I mean, my body drops off. It's laying there and I'm standing here. I, I still was in faith for healing, even though my body dropped. Is healing still a fact? Yes, it is. It's a fact. Because he's not a sort of kind of by his stripes. He sort of healed us. Kind of for some people, if you believe hard enough. It doesn't say any of those things. It just states the fact. 
See, it's messing with your head even now, isn't it? So, yeah. But it's the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. So if you're waiting to sense it through your five senses, you're waiting for that. And once that manifests, then I'll be in faith. No, you're in faith without seeing it. You're in faith without seeing it. Amen? Mm -hmm. For by this kind of faith, the men of old gained divine approval. And basically, that means they got something done when you look up that word. Like they gained uh, movement in the kingdom because they were in faith. Would you rather follow somebody in faith or somebody out of faith? Like I'm like, I just heard bombs are dropping in Cambridge. So I don't know, really, I can't, I wonder, you're going to all be like, I just can't wait to follow her. She's just really going to protect us all. No. I mean, the last person that you would follow, there should be some assuredness. There should be some faith. If nothing else, we gather and we say, all right, hold on. Let's regroup. Let's pray right now. And let's speak the word. God will tell us what to do next. If that's all I say, that's good leadership and it comes by faith. But if I'm as confused as you are, you're in big trouble. Amen. Good leadership is built in faith. Good business is built in faith. The CEO go, that goes and has a company, but they just don't know. They're in this company. We don't know what's going to happen. And it's the constant feeling of that. You are out of faith. And we just have to call a spade a spade. There's been some areas where um, just recently I'm like, honey, I think I'm out of faith in this. Not like I ran out. I assumed I was in faith to begin with. And then when the trial came, I realized I'm not in faith. What? It's not a condemnation. It's not a con man damning your nation. This is where damn means to put a limit on. It's not that. It's you and your position of where you set your mind and set your faith. If I'm totally convinced of something, then I set my faith toward that. Mine, mine, mine. Don't touch that. That's mine. Right? It was promised to me by God. And so that's when you'll come up into boundaries. But guess what? A person who doesn't operate in faith, guess what they don't have? Boundaries. Because there's nothing to protect. You just never know. Anything can happen. We just got to wonder what God's thinking right now. Remember, he's sovereign. Remember I said you got to get breathy to really drive that home? He's a sovereign God. Ooh. Right? No, he's a sure God who operates in sovereignness. But he's sure. And he's faithful to us. What does the word faithful mean? Will he be there for me always? Well, guess what? Faithful means he's full of faith over us. And that's why he's there for us always. He'll never leave us or forsake us. Why? Because he's faithful. If you're faithful to a church, you're full of faith about that church. As soon as you lose faith, it's like, I don't know. If you're faithful in your marriage, hmm, great. But as soon as you enter any form of unbelief, like, I don't really know, you're out of faith. Just stay Full of faith, you'd be faithful. It produces that in us. So just this first section is what we're really talking about right now. And I'm going to go over it again because it, our brains go <laughs> a lot of times. Now faith is the assurance. That's a big word. Assurance, the title deed or the confirmation is what that means. It is what confirms this thing is going to come to pass. I shall see out my days in strength. Blessed of God, highly favored, even if the world stinks. Now, does that mean I get out of everything? No, I never said that. In this world, there's trouble, and it's all around. So we don't get out of that, do we? But he can bring us and navigate us to 
where it's our approach to everything that will hold us in a damnation point of having being limited or we get to move ahead in a blessing point which the word blessed means empowered to prosper to have success down the road that means it's a movement how does the kingdom of god move the kingdom is the sphere of his rule <sighs> That's how it moves. It's all powerful. He loves spheres. He loves circles. He loves uh, rotation. <laughs> the most power is in that. And so here he is. The kingdom of God is in us. Jesus rules from the kingdom. And the kingdom of God advances how? Forcefully. Not passively. And forceful men and women lay hold of it. The kingdom is, is, the word kingdom means the sphere of his rule, his domain. D-O-M is domain. Like he owns it. You get the kingdom to dwell inside here. When you receive Christ, you're literally saying, come dwell in me, kingdom of the living God. That's why they went about preaching, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. We've talked about that before. Like it's right here. You can have all those things in the kingdom. You can operate in this, but you got to repent in order to enter the kingdom. You can't jump the fence. There's a whole part of scripture that talks about that. You can't just be like through osmosis or assimilate through your grandma or somebody to get into the kingdom. You can't get in the back way. You can't jump the fence. You have to go through somebody. Who do you have to go through? Jesus, the great shepherd. We're the sheep that can't jump the fence. We got to come right through the front. And he purifies us, puts his blood on us, marks us as part of his flock, puts our name in the Lamb's book of life. And he's sure about us. And now his kingdom dwells in us. And the kingdom operates by faith. It does not carry unbelief in the kingdom. That's pretty intense when you think about it. That's why our world is so far off. Because when we fell from glory, whoo, we face planted hardcore. Like it was a long way down. <laughs> I know for me, it was like, ah, I just kept in that state, ah, for a long ways. And I face planted. And then you look around, you're like, what happened? You fell short of the glory of God. The way God does things is by faith, in faith. Now, someone can take this and um, through your filter of pain, you can filter that as like, see, what you're saying is if I don't have faith in a certain area, then I'm not enough. Are we enough without the blood of Jesus? Not so much. Right? He's the one who makes us enough. So we don't have to worry about being enough if we apply the blood of Jesus. He makes us enough. So our inadequacies is where he is shown strong. Like he, the kingdom's hanging out all over. And I get to sit in the middle of that and go, he's using all this? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> like, are you serious? And you just wonder, like, how, how does that even, what? But my heart is marked for him. And if you come through the gate, through Christ, yours is marked too. Amen. So condemnation, I don't know how, but um, our, our brains filter sometimes through that whole thing that says you're not enough, that you've got to earn this. Now they're, you know, if I just don't have enough faith, I've been praying for faith. Just choose the faith you have. Stop praying for more faith. Just choose to believe. Like when you go to forgive somebody that you really want to slap kick, <laughs> do that by faith. I choose to believe right now. I choose to forgive them. Do you feel like it? Absolutely not. But by choice, I'm releasing them. And God, I ask you to release me from that wickedness that's in my heart. Two days later, I still might feel those things. But I know that by faith, I release them. And I got released. So I have to say this over and over and over. It's something that got dealt with. But you do it by faith in the name of Jesus. That's our access 
line. That's our power in the name of Jesus. I come boldly before the throne of grace in my hour of need in the mighty name of Jesus. Why? Because I went in the gate. Now, there are people who haven't have not entered the kingdom and the kingdom hasn't entered them. They haven't come into the sheep gate like it's talked about. They're not even in the pen. But because they went to church with grandma through osmosis, a couple marriages, one funeral at a certain church, they're Christians. Is that true? No. There's only one name written among men under heaven where by we must be saved, and it is the name of Jesus. There's only one gate. So you can't jump the fence. I was hoping I jumped the fence. I remember that. Went to a really dead church, but I felt like when people asked you, are you a Christian? Oh, yeah, we're Christians. I didn't know what that meant. But I felt when I said that, it was like, yeah, I jumped in. He never saw me in there like I've been hiding out because I don't really want him to know I'm there because then I'd be held accountable, right? It's that type of feeling. You... You have to go in through the gate. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes back to the Father except through him. Amen? And that comes by faith. So I can say all that, and you're like, I don't know if I believe that. Can you access the gate? No. You have to believe. That's the one thing that God has required of us that will open all kinds of doors with the keys of the kingdom is I choose to believe. I choose to believe that God has a plan. I choose to believe that his plan is good for me and good for you. I choose to believe he will help us through any forms of addiction. I choose to believe healing is mine and yours. I choose to believe that whether I feel like it or not. I don't, I can't, Count on my emotional state. How many of you can count on your emotional state? You're like, my emotional state is so reliable. I love it. I mean, I can just count on it at any time. No, it's freaking out half the time. Or it's angry. Or it's crying. And talking death talk. And then you're going to rely on that area of your soul? I just got to check in with my emotions to see if I feel it. That's dangerous ground. Think about it as a soldier. If we had to right now, if I was your general and we were going to go take a hill, right? And I told you, I don't know, statistically, half of us might not make it. But we're going, right? If we all stopped and checked our emotions, I'd probably be the only one going up that hill. Am I not right? Be kind of like, whew, that'd be intense. But there's something about us doing where we make a choice and then we say, I feel you, emotions. Is it bad to feel your emotions? No, you, I feel you. But I'm going to have to set you here. Just sit right here, pat them on the head, you nice little emotions. But you can't tell me what to do. You've been replaced by the Holy Spirit. And your emotions are like, what? You can't abandon me like that. I've been trying to help you for years. And you're like, it's okay. You just sit here. Here's a lollipop. Right? <laughs> and then you go on with the spirit of God. Just like soldiers will take, they're going to go take a hill. They'll take their picture of their wife out or their kids and look at it and then close that and put it back in their pocket. And then everything gets set to the side because they have a mission. A good soldier. That's so hard and that's so harsh. And no, if you're going to make it through the war of faith, the faith fight, we have to learn who's in charge. My spirit under the Holy Spirit trumps the rest of me. I choose to believe that by faith. Now, I didn't live that way for a long time. My soul told my body what to do, and my body was like, sure, let's go do that. And then my spirit was like, hey, uh, can I have a sec here? I just want to say something. And I'm like, be quiet. We're trying to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And so I couldn't hear conviction. I couldn't hear convincing. I couldn't hear nothing. People were praying for me, but I had put the order of my being, it was upside down. And that night when I came to the altar, I gave my life to God and the kingdom got in me and started working. What he was doing, I felt like he blew my face off. I felt like it was like inside of me. Why? Because he was like, oh, this whole place is out of order. We're going to have to rearrange. Spirit first. Right? Soul, we'll check that out. Mind, will, and emotion is your soul. And because uh, we got to use this interface, this gray matter to communicate. And then body, it's like, you're coming with me. Whatever I decide to do, you're coming with me. But if we flip that, our body will tell us we need all kinds of things we don't need. And our soul will back that up. Yeah, we need that. You don't understand. I just have to, I have to have that. Right? And, and if your spirit is weak, which means it's not in the habit of being full in your faith, or using your faith. Your faith can be sitting there. The faith that's like a mustard seed can move an entire mountain. If you say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast in the sea, and you do not doubt or be in dual thought in your heart, you shall have whatsoever you say. Oh, that's word. So we come back over here, and we just say, well, God, just give me more faith. No, what faith do you got? I got this little mustard seed. Well, use it. Use it. It's far bigger than the rest of you because it's lit up by fire that's where the baptism of the holy spirit comes you have salvation and then you have the baptism of the holy spirit hmm. i'm telling you here, let me let me read you a scripture i have on my phone here because i keep it there because i like reading it over and over it calls to me matthew uh 311 says i baptize you with water for repentance but he who's coming after me is mightier than I whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire and when that spiritual fire hits that little tiny mustard seed of faith poof, hope comes alive hope is the fuel to your faith hope is a joyful confident expectation of something good suddenly you feel like a warrior and you did not before and you rise up in your most holy faith. You know, a little tiny thing. And you begin to speak differently. That's why we have to have our lips cleansed. With fire. Now, don't go home, make a fire, and stick your... You know, don't do that. That's not what it's talking about. It's spiritual fire. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, if we take those scriptures and be like, okay, that's so out of control. You're way off in the ditch and whatever. We'll look up anywhere where it talks about fire and the Holy Spirit. Take all of that and throw it out. By the time you're done, you've lost a big chunk of the gospel. You've lost the chunk where he left Holy Spirit and fire for us to be able to do this ugly life and get through this wicked world. When he said, I will not leave you alone. Don't worry about it, right? I'm going to go to heaven, and I'm not leaving you alone. I will send the Spirit. And the Spirit did what? Came and baptized them with fire. Dunamis, dynamite, power. Well, that was for back then, because he doesn't really care about us. He just left us all alone. But told the disciples he wasn't going to leave them alone, because he made that promise. But then once he checked out, we couldn't hold him accountable. Think about it. That's how dumb that talk is, really. And what he bought for us on the cross and what he <laughs> delivered to us was resurrection power. How, where did resurrection power? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. How did that happen? The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. He did that with fire. <laughs> Blew right past death, hell on the grave. <laughs> and then he turns around and tells us, greater things than these will you do. How are we going to do that? With the baptism of fire. I say this 
because I, I think it's interesting. We say God the Father, people are like, yeah, I don't really talk to him much. And on occasion, I'll say, our Father who art in heaven. But I don't really know if I want to look him in the eye. You know, it's that kind of feeling. But Jesus, Jesus is my, my big brother. He's my friend. He's the mighty warrior. I'm hanging out with Jesus. Holy Spirit, yeah, we don't even talk about the Holy Spirit. Like, like that's a part of the Godhead that got kicked out. So somewhere, unbelief of these same scriptures came on people. And they created a doctrine that was kind of like, uh, and then the disciples were baptized with fire, and then the fire went out. <laughs> and the people from that day forward just have to suffer and make it through life because he's sovereign. You just never know. Does that make sense? That doesn't even make logical sense. It is outside of love, and it's outside of the word. Okay. Hmm. For by this kind of faith, faith uh, verse 2, the men of old gain divine approval. By faith, that is with an inherent trust and an enduring confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God, we understand that the worlds or the universe ages were framed and created, formed and put in order and equipped for their intended purpose, just like you were equipped for your intended purpose. He did that. By the word of God it took place, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. It all came by faith. I get pumped up when I read these things. By faith, that is, with an inherent trust and enduring confidence. That means um, I can make an exacto knife statement because the word said it. I am the healed of the Lord. Where does endurance come in? Everybody else going, she can say that. Your doctor saying, well, that's not what I saw on the x-ray. I mean, there's all the, so there is an endurance where you stand and stand there for. You stand and you stand there for. Because I'm standing in faith. I am sorry that you're in unbelief on my life. But this isn't your life. It's mine. Somebody asked me recently, well, what happens if somebody just doesn't believe in all that stuff? but they believe that Jesus died for their sins, they'll go to heaven, right? Really hard to live a victorious life, though, isn't it? You know, like you're scratching all the way there. You're just hanging on, you know, by the skin of your teeth. You're just like, okay, thank God I'm dying, almost. Because he's brought us from glory to glory, Line upon line, precept upon precept. The word precept, when you look at it up, means command upon command. God says, do this. I get up in my most holy faith and do it. How'd you do that? I have no idea. He had to have empowered me, but I believed. Then he gives you another command, and he gives you another command, and he gives you another command, and you grow line upon line, precept upon precept. You don't grow going, I wish I had some faith. Seems like other people believe for stuff, and I just, he just didn't do that. I just don't, you don't understand what I'm going through. Sometimes, I've had little sessions with myself in the mirror where it's like, look at me. You know? You ever talk to yourself that way? Like, look at me. You are out of faith. How else are you going to get yourself back into faith? Kind of like when your kid's throwing a fit. And they're like, you guys did it. And they turn into raptors and they're, like, and they're laying on the floor and it's the end of the world. And, and everything that comes out of them is trash at that point. This is, Everyone hates me. You always love them more. I can't do it. You know, and all of those things. It's not fair. Right? And you know they're an angel when they're not doing that. But when they're doing that, they are out of faith on anything that's godly. Have you ever looked at it like that? When a kid isn't, they, they're, they're not operating in the belief that they're loved, they'll be taken care of, it will be fair, whatever. Even if you're operating in the fairness, their flesh chooses not to believe that that's what's going on. And they lose their stuff. And it's pretty... I mean, some of them turn into contortionists, you know, it's like, whoa, their bodies go, you're like, how are you even pulling that off? You know, and it, and it really is. And it's their whole being feels 
like they're not loved, unheard, all of those different things. So then what is it our job as parents? Well, you take your belt off, you get at them. No, you restore or give to them the first time how their faith is going to operate. Now, if you go through all that and they know exactly what they're doing and they can repeat back to you what they're doing. What did I tell you? Don't hit your, my brother in his face. Okay, then why did you do that? Then there should be something that follows. Because now you know exactly what you're doing and you don't care. But there's a difference. Many times kids are throwing a fit. They're like, Bleh! because they really think it's going down a certain way. And they're totally out of faith. And it's your job as a parent to go over there, get down to their level and say, hey, 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 look at me. Look at me. You need to breathe. We need to calm down. God has this. You're going to be okay. <laughs> but you always... <laughs> hyperventilation and all that kind of stuff and you're just working with you they're, you're not going to give them some big speech at that point they're not going to listen to that they want to see you role model the faith that you have in god that this is all going to work out and it's going to be okay and all of a sudden they'll just lock into that and they're like oh and that same kid that was losing it contorting their body looking like a raptor goes off and plays on the playground and everything's fine how's that work well how's that work with us How's that work? When we get out of faith, what do we look like? Sometimes we're raptors. <laughs> I mean, we want to be honest. We're like, no, praise God, I would never. I might cry a little tear or something. No, sometimes we're raptors. And sometimes we get loud and obnoxious. And sometimes we trash talk the people we feel the closest to because they're the safest ones we can say it to. Because you're not going to say that same thing to your neighbor, but you will to your wife or your husband. Because like, where are they going to go? You married me. <laughs> you know, it's that. So we always will, will show that side to the person we feel the safest with. Mm -hmm. And what we're demonstrating when we're like that is like, shoot, we're out of faith. We were in faith. And now for some reason, I just stepped out of faith. And I, had, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Now, Vernon and I will hold each other accountable. Sometimes I'll get like, I don't know, over something. You can tell because I start pacing. My hand will start doing this number. Like I'm in a gunfight. I'm like, just go ahead, pull it. You know, it's, I get that feeling. But it, 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 it's that because I'm trying to work it through. My body's trying to work it through or whatever. And he's smart enough to know she's out. Because if you're going to fight in that moment, fight for what's right. But you don't know what's right. That's why you're not in faith. And once you find out what's right, you might not like what's right. It's like, but, but what if I don't like that? Still right. Still true. Still something you got to grab a hold of. Still. Ah, okay. And then you adjust your body. Come on, body. You're coming with me. And emotions are like, and they're going raptor. And you're like, shh. And your spirit says, yes, I agree with the word of God. <sighs> it's a big process, isn't it? Big process. That's called, in, in the clinical world, it's called self-regulation. But here's the truth about it. If you haven't learned how to walk by faith and don't understand how to communicate with the Holy Spirit or haven't even read the word, you're not going to regulate yourself. Because if I could have regulated myself before I got born again, oh, I'd have regulated up. <laughs> then I wouldn't have had to hear, you know what that is? That's the principal's office. Just, I'd have regulated up. I sometimes still, you know how sometimes moms are on the phone and you can hear them click? Yeah, I know, I know. They'll do that thing. <laughs> as soon as I hear that, it's like I'm going to the principal's office. Okay. You know? <laughs> There's something about because I couldn't self-regulate. But think about what I'm saying. I'm going to regulate myself with what information? The information I have, which is inadequate. That's how I got in this trouble to begin with. So we have to have an outward source to come dwell and rule us, which is the kingdom. Can't have the kingdom, though, unless you repent. That's just so harsh. Really? What's happening on this side is harsh. Amen. Me saying a prayer and asking the kingdom come in, that's his mercy. Yeah, yeah. 
He's like, just, just get over here. Come on. Just do it. It's right there. I'll start ruling and reigning in your heart and dividing these things out. And your spirit will become a new creation in me. And that new creation isn't just like, here I am new. It's all of a sudden, I'm starting to understand the kingdom. My believer just came alive. And if I believe for salvation, salvation's the whole meal deal. That's healing, deliverance, prosperity. Anything that he bought on the cross that was opposite of what the devil was already doing. Right? That's what Jesus said. He's like, I'm going to go get what's opposite of what you're doing. And when he said it was finished, it was finished. It was done. And we're certain about it. So if he finished it, then we need to stop praying like as if he's still working it up. You know, some of our prayers, they sound like, you know, he's got to create it all brand new just for us because our problem is so different than everyone else's. And really what he did for us, he did 2,000 years ago. We're just having a hard time receiving it. Because if we receive it, remember what I said in the Greek, it means to take. To take. But think about when you're throwing a fit like a raptor. You're like, Hurrah! you're doing that. You're not in the taking. You're in the, I want everyone to pay. <laughs> That's the mode we're in. We're, we're like, we just want someone else to hurt. We want them to know how much we're hurting. We're spending all kinds of uh, space, time, and energy in our brain. And all we have to do is reset and be like, well, wait a second. What does the kingdom say? Well, I got to approach the kingdom, and I got to approach the king. And I do that by the spirit of the living God, who is fire. And he will burn out anything that is in this soulish realm, that is in my flesh, that's keeping me from faith. It's keeping me from approaching God. It's like when we convince ourselves, you ever have that where you're like, I've been praying about this all week. Seriously, Pastor Mary, all week. And what'd you say? Well, I just, I just been praying. Yeah, I know, but what kind of prayers are you praying? Well, I just been thinking about it. <laughs> That's not prayer. What word are you standing on? No, you don't understand. I have just been thinking about this all week. That's not prayer. Prayer is when the kingdom, the sphere of his rule says, that is not of my father's kingdom. What is of my father's kingdom? You go in here and you read it. And you go, oh, that's what of my father's kingdom. I choose to believe that. And your emotions go, but wait for me. You're like, shh. Your body's like, I don't know if I, quiet. We're going this direction. Amen? Whoo. That's how it's supposed to work. Does it work that way every day? No. And it's probably God's fault, right? It's never on God's side. That's not condemnation either. That's just fact. That's just fact. The fact is that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And the word glory is not only his presence and his power. It means the way he does things. It's the way he does things. So when we're, you know, throwing a hissy, doing whatever it is that we do, uh, the way he does things wants to speak to us. But we're busy in our emotional state, and we can't hear him. And then you'll get a pastor like myself, because I've been asked the same question. So I've learned to ask other people this. What is God saying to you? I, I can't even hear him. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I've been, like, praying all week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? What? Is it wrong to cry? No. no. I've cried so hard I thought my stomach was going to come out my, my throat. I've cried so hard that my eyes were swollen shut. People, <laughs> people in Walmart are like, are you okay? You know, I've cried. And I've had my raptor moments, just like you. <laughs> right? Just like you. So that's why when you're having a moment, I'm like, they're having a moment. Hmm. How do we get them back up into faith? Or into faith for the first time. So sometimes when I'm, I, I was doing that, and I'm, I'm sure there's areas I still need to grow in now, and the word is there, I can only take the word in and make that switch by making a choice. Yep. Everything in the kingdom comes by faith through a choice. 
through a choice. And so, you know, a couple years ago, I don't know if it was Dr. Spock, Dr. Whoever, whatever, they came up with this for two-year-olds. It works. Where you give choices, right? We're used to you get the belt or something like that. The kid knows enough uh, to be able to communicate, <laughs> to be dangerous, but not enough to be able to communicate. And the same thing with their understanding. And so they're a little like that. And you're trying to get them to calm down. And part of what they've learned somehow, really interesting, is when they have a choice. Like you need to calm down. So you can either sit on this chair or you can sit right here next to mommy. What do you want to do right now? <laughs> you know? And they're, and they're blinking like a frog in a hailstorm, trying to figure it out. <laughs> That's what they're doing. They're trying, and it's a big choice at that moment. It's just like life-threatening, big, the chair next to mine. And then they make the choice. And their brain starts switching into, I guess I'm moving somewhere. I'm not stuck. And then when they're in that spot, you give them a couple more choices. Do you want to talk about this now? Or in a little bit? <laughs> a little bit. Okay. Do you want mom to hold you? No. Okay. Don't you like having choices? God talks to us by giving us choices. He gives us his will, which is his precepts, his commands, his ways of doing things. And then he gives us choices as to when we're going to appropriate that. You want to do that now? Or are you going to wait? Wait, I'm not done crying. I've done that. We're like, no, I'm going to sulk for two days. I'll get back to you. <laughs> that don't say that right out, but that's what we've done. Right. We're like, no, I'm still like in a pity party mode, and I don't want the party to be over. Right? Because somehow we can't figure out where we're going, but this gratifies us to stay stuck in that. Right. He'll give you that choice, won't he? Do you still have that choice? You sure do. You can sit in that for a couple of days if you want. And they'll say, you ready to talk about it? Yeah. And have you ever noticed it's something so simple, so short, so full of power that he'll say to us, and we're like. <laughs> and then there's a little bit of embarrassment about the last four or five days. You're like, that was actually bigger than. Now I realize it's not a, yeah. <laughs> I made it bigger than what it was. And he'll just say something short to you, something small, and all of a sudden your faith will come on and you'll be like, yeah, that makes sense. <sighs> he wants us to come up into our most holy faith, a faith that endures, a faith that's sure, a faith that knows whom you believe in and that he is able, a faith that doesn't talk out two sides of the mouth. Now, some people will go around and think, well, if I confess that I don't have cancer enough, then I won't have cancer. So I saw somebody do that. Did the Lord tell you to do that? No, I just came up with that. I'm, I'm doing it. Well, then you're on your own. <laughs> so, but we'll see people do that, and then people, they go to that faith church, you know, that cult faith church, and they do the weirdest thing. We never told them to do that, and neither did God. <laughs> but if he tells you what to say, you say only what he said to say. Understand that? And what he tells me to say is not going to be opposite of his word, but it might be different than what he tells you to say about your life. It's going to be scriptural both ways. Right? Now, abuse and trauma bonding, for instance, once that's triggered, that will keep looping inside of you. And the whole purpose is I want you to stay in unbelief. I want you to feel the pain of this. I need you to stay bonded to the thing where you don't believe you're taken care of. You're going to be abandoned and rejected. Stay over here. Stay over here. Stay over here. And it's so, like, feels so powerful, doesn't it? Y'all know what I'm talking about. When you're in the moment, the moment is real. And how you feel, your feelings are real to you. Someone else looking in can go, that is a lie from the pit of hell. That is not even, what are you, right? But for you, it's looping because you're stuck in it. It's trying to damn your soul. Damnation means to put a limit on how you think. So you can't set your mind and set your faith like it says in Romans 8. They won't let you do that. 
You're just like, what's the problem? What's the problem? You understand the problem and the problem. And sometimes we're afraid that if we come up into our most holy faith, trauma stuff will make you afraid that you'll actually succeed. Because if you haven't had that before, then you're like, that worked. So now what do I do? And it just feels like any time the mountains are going to come crumbling down because there was some form of success and you don't know what that feels like. You don't know how to protect it. You don't know how it got there. And you don't know how to, if it's going to go away. So that's when we usually start sabotaging, don't we? I love exposing how the devil works. Because once you know, even if you flip into it, you're like, oh, that's that thing. That is that thing. He's got me over here in that thing. And so as hard it is, I'm going to turn. I'm making, I'm making a choice. What, what, God, what are my choices? Your choices start some worship. Okay, all right, I'm going to start some worship. Or your choice is this, right? Or you can sit in it because he's not going to force you to do a thing. Then we make a choice by that little mustard seed faith that says, I will worship. It's just like learning to tithe. It's like you release it and you take it back. It's like, ah, you know, it's, it's the same feeling or you're giving. And it will test your heart. That's what the word says. It will test your heart. If you choose to give something to your neighbor and it has nothing to do with giving to the church and you get many times the test of the heart, is, let me help you out, buddy. And you give it and all some pride comes up. Yeah, I helped my neighbor. That's what I did. That's a test to the emergency broadcasting system, and you're failing it. <laughs> right? Or there's something that'd be like, maybe I shouldn't have gave that to him. Now he's going to think he can borrow all my tools, and maybe the blah, 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 and it'll go down a whole nother thing. So it doesn't have to be the offering plate. Anytime you give, it will be tested. It's a test of the heart. God says when you give, it tests where your treasures are at. Test your heart to see where is your treasure at. Is it in the heavenlies? Or is it all about you? Mm. I know, right? I'm going through too. Mm -hmm. We all have to come up in our most holy faith. And, you know, it's like uh, going to a workout guru, right? You're, go you're going... And you're like, I want to learn how to do whatever exercise. And I, I want to be able to do this. And you pay good money for it. A lot of people won't do that because they, they look you in the face. They talk to your face. Or you can sign up for a gym and not show up. You can sign up for a gym and enter the gym. And look around, do a couple little things, and leave whenever you want to. But when you sign up with an exercise, dude... <laughs> It is their job to get you in shape. And you said you wanted that. <laughs> right? It's very much like, ha, ah. ha, You made that choice. Now, is he going to or she going to do the thing of like, oh, I can see you're sweating. Maybe just only do five. <laughs> oh, is that a tear or is that sweat? Oh, just do two. No, nope, they got a program and you're sticking to the program. Right? So sometimes our choice is God saying, stick to the program because I can't produce the thing you're wanting. I can't produce that in you unless you stick to the program. It's that same person who signed up for that six months later. They're like, I don't think that made a difference at all. Well, you didn't do the program. Kind of like when you sign up for those businesses. <laughs> I've owned some of those businesses. You know how those businesses work? If you work the business, any business works when you work the business, but you don't work the business. You can't blame the business. It's the mirror that you're looking at. <laughs> There's something about it. Well, once you made a commitment, then you actually have to get up. You have to show up. You have to make a website. You have to do the thing. You, I don't, ah, I thought I could just, cause they said they got rich in like three months. Well, sometimes it's presented really poorly. 
like when I've owned different vitamin businesses and things like that, I don't present that to people. I'm like, you're going to have to work the business to, to make money out of this. This is the product I like about out of these hundred. These two I don't think are any good. I mean, I'm just bluntly honest. Because I, I feel like I'm not going to sell somebody something I don't believe in. But the thing I do believe in, I'm going to speak about it. And then you need to show up to do the business. That means you need to make the telephone calls. You need to make a list. You know, and you notice they always give you those first five things you need to do for the business. And how many of us, if you want to be honest, did all five consistently? Now, somehow, there's something where we feel like I heard the guy who got rich really quick. And I feel like I can just, through osmosis, get that. It doesn't work that way. Plus, some of the people presented that way. I haven't had to work for the last six months. Yeah, right. You might be on your yacht. But you're on your yacht with your phone and your computer's there. And uh, you cannot tell me you're the CEO of some company and you're just not involved at all. That's trash talk. So it shouldn't be presented like that. But even if it was presented right, you signed up for it. You made a commitment. Who's got to do that commitment? Hmm, I think that was my signature. In order for it to work, I got to work the business. Or the business won't work. In order to lose weight, I got to stick with the dude I hired. I don't know what it is, but sometimes we don't even care. If we're spending $90 a month on a gym, <laughs> we ain't showing up. Are you, well, why don't you cancel it or something? Well, you can't because they had to give you the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, we should have thought it through before we signed up, right? Let's stand. We worship by faith. The problems that you're facing right now, the harder they feel, if we want to be honest, it's because our emotions are not sure what choices we have or we're afraid to make the choices that are in front of us. True that, right? And so then we'll say this, I'm just a waiting and a hoping, believing and a praying to Jesus. Just a waiting two years later. I'm just a waiting and hoping. <laughs> Nothing's going to move because we're not actually working the problem. And the problem gets addressed by faith. And faith is something that comes out. Faith is neither even in thy mouth. And how do you know what to put in your mouth? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the what? the word of God revelation of that word comes by the spirit and the spirit then drops that down in our heart and that's when it says if you adhere to the word and the word to you right you will know the truth and the truth will set you free see we always forget that first part the if part nobody quotes that they always just quote you know the truth and the truth will set you free it has to adhere inside of you Amen? So whatever you're going through right now, right in this moment, you got to ask yourself a truthful question. Where am I out of faith? It's not a condemnation question. It's a reality check. It's a, it's a self-awareness. It's like, hmm, where am I in unbelief? Where do I believe he's going to take care of me? Where, where is my faith in all this? And then once you've figured the faith part out and what he's told you, you set your faith. Romans 7, 8, and 9, those chapters, read in there. You set your faith, and you set your mind. This is what he said. And I'm convinced, and I have the title deed, and it's mine because he said so, because this is how the kingdom works. And so this isn't working like the kingdom. It's got to come over to how the kingdom works, because I have the kingdom of God dwelling inside of me, and it advances forcefully, and I lay hold of it, not in a passive way. You got a diagnosis, cancer or something like kidney disease or something like that? The first church you're going to go to is a passive believing church, right? And ask for prayer. First friend you're going to ask for prayer. Well, he's passive. He doesn't know if it's going to work or not. I'll go over there and ask them. I got to find somebody who's an elder in this. You come before the elders of the church does not mean the guy with the little pin. He might be wearing a pin, but he might not. 
It might be the little grandma way in the back who's full of faith regarding your situation. And you come to that person, and by the laying on of hands, you will be healed. You take your most holy faith, and you combine it with their most holy faith. Fire. Dunamis. Power. Hallelujah. So I believe people came in here tonight, and um, you weren't sure what to do with it all. I can feel that during the worship. Do you feel that, Terry? It's like, it's like sometimes you feel like you're plowing. Like we're plowing this field for the first time. <laughs> and, and it feels like it's dragging, and then it's there, and then not so much. That's because there's some type of things in the life that are saying, just calm down, be passive about it. You don't know what to believe anyway. Just let it just kind of go. No, you come up in your most holy faith. When you leave tonight, you go, Holy Spirit, show me. I will knock, seek, and ask until I get that answer. And when I do, I shall stand. And then when something comes against me in this wicked day, I will stand there for Stand, remember, is this position. Stand, therefore, is this position. Because I was already standing here and everybody knew my position. But then the demonic realm said, I don't know if I believe you. <laughs> okay. And then I stand, therefore. My position is to not move from my most holy faith. So, Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are the truth, the life, and the way. You're the resurrection and the life. All power is in you. All glory is in you. Lord, you're the way back to the Father. Thank you, Jesus, by the Spirit. And the same way Jesus raised, you were raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit, our dead situation will be raised too by the Word and the Spirit and the choice to believe. It's the Word and the Spirit and the choice to believe. So forgive us, Lord God, for any unbelief. We all have some, so forgive us. Bring us into our most holy faith. We choose to believe it. And everyone said yes and amen.